You're tuning into Black and White Sports on YouTube. The no holds barred truth on sports. The main event starts now. Well, black and white sports fans, I put up a video yesterday about Cowboys great Emmett Smith losing his mind over the University of Florida ending racism, also known as DEI, diversity, equity and inclusion. They fired everyone that actually had a job in their DEI department. Now, these people are going to get paid for like three months. They got an opportunity to go out there and find another job. And I believe that DEI needs to be eliminated across the country because DEI is nothing more than Marxism. It's a new spin on Marxism. This all started from uh, George Floyd and uh, the George Floyd thing really destroyed the NBA as well. That's when the NBA really lost their minds and they put a Marxist symbol on the basketball court. I mean, the whole George Floyd effect, man, has affected everything including the sports media. And the Walt sports media is dying. ESPN has seen much better days. Now, Stephen A. Smith, he is in the sports media. And Stephen A. Smith is also triggered by the fact that the University of Florida has ended racism. He is triggered by that. But also he brings in Clay Travis into this because on Outkick, Outkick the show the other day, Clay Travis called for the same thing I called for. The elimination of DEI everywhere. It doesn't need to happen. Now, if you guys remember Dr. King, he wanted equality as an equal opportunity. Whereas the Marxists, they want equity, which means I don't have to work for anything Just give it to me based on my skin color. And DEI has destroyed everything, man. Have you looked at your entertainment? And also, by the way, we got the uh, what the Academy Awards coming up now. You basically have to have DEI included in movies to even get nominated. Yeah. Even though nobody was actually watching those award shows, but I digress. Back to Stephen A. Because he has his own podcast, man. And he actually calls out and slams Clay Travis for his opinion on DEI being eliminated and calling for DEI to be eliminated everywhere. Now, he did not call Clay Travis a racist. He made that pretty clear. And he said that um, no one should actually be calling Clay Travis a racist. And I don't believe that Clay Travis is a racist anyway. But let's go ahead and react to what Stephen A. Smith had to say. Not the whole thing. The whole clip is like 16 minutes. But we're going to watch some of it, okay? Because Stephen A. even addresses uh, Emmett Smith uh, going crazy. I skipped over that part because you guys already know what Emmett Smith said. So let's get into it, guys. Make sure you guys like this video. Subscribe to the channel. Become a channel member. Member live stream every single Friday at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. We appreciate the support. So here we go. Check this out on Mediate. Stephen A. Smith fires back at Clay Travis for supporting Florida cutting DEI jobs. And he says, why are we ignoring history? So with that being said, guys, let's just go ahead and listen in to uh, Screaming A. Smith here. Let's play it. Such classifications. Before I get any further into my opinion. Let me tell you what sparked my desire to touch on this subject. It wasn't even just a ruling. It was Clay Travis, conservative talk show host, speaking on this issue. Now, before I play this clip for you, Clay Travis has been a guest on this show. I've been a guest on his show, on his podcast. So it's not like we haven't seen each other and we haven't spoken to one another. I'll elaborate more extensively. After you hear what he has to say here, listen up. Florida Gators have done something that I think is really important. And for any state attorney general or any red state governor and or their staff that watches this clip, I think every state needs to do the exact same thing. Today, effective immediately, every diversity, uh, uh, equity, and inclusion employee 
at the University of Florida was fired. They all had to leave. Their jobs ended immediately. The $5 million that was being spent, which is a crazy amount of money, on yeah. their salaries will now go back into the general fund and they will be able to hire actual employees to do actual jobs, not corporate diversity, equity, and inclusion zealots. And I would say this in general. I think every diversity, equity, and inclusion employee on the planet should be fired. This is the foundational strength and, uh, and, 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 and basically prerogative of identity politics there you have it there you've heard it so he wants dei eliminated everywhere <sighs> let me be very delicate with what i'm about to say and it's important because i want y'all to know several things number one clay travis again came on this show made a lot of good points in the past I respect what he has to say in most instances. I don't always agree. Half the time, at least, I don't agree. But I respect it. And one of the things that we're not going to do, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm speaking especially to my brothers and sisters out there, my black brothers and sisters, we ain't going to be calling him no racist or anything like that just because he feels the way that he feels. We ain't going that route. We're going to stick to the issue at hand. OK, because he is entitled to his feelings. He's just not entitled to his facts. Now, we know that Stephen A, what he's going to consider facts is more of a, his opinion. OK, but um, let's continue on. We have our facts, too. And when you talk about diversity, equity and inclusion, let's make sure we understand a couple of things that are incredibly imperative to bring up. How about history? You see, when you see people like Trey Clay Travis and especially Ron DeSantis, who just finished getting his butt whipped by Donald Trump throughout the primaries, which is why he had to back out long before Nikki Haley is going to end up backing out. OK. Trying to beat Trump and that didn't work. And by that, I mean, just trying to echo some of the sentiments that Trump had articulated throughout the years didn't work for him. But DeSantis, in all likelihood, wasn't qualified to be president because it's one thing to be petty. That's damaging enough, but you can't be petty with no pizzazz. And that was him. And he picked the wrong people to fight up against and he paid dearly for it. But these kind of issues that Ron DeSantis brings up, that Clay Travis has signed off on, why are we ignoring history? See, Clay Travis, that's my problem respectfully that's my problem and for those out there that said oh you know him and clay travis whatever if he wants to talk about it we'll talk about it nobody's running but that's my problem history why do we ignore history when you take the position that you take that you took diversity equity and inclusion what's wrong with diversity nobody's saying anything that's wrong with diversity stephen a What's wrong with inclusion? Equity might be challenging because not everybody deserves equality. Well, look at this here. Equity is Marxism. Equity is racially based hiring practices like um, in this case right here or admissions in college. The Supreme Court just last year, they told Harvard, you need to stop what you're doing because what you're doing is affecting Asian students. Harvard was being racist against Asians when it came to the admission process because they were actually letting in other races and those people weren't weren't as qualified. Stephen A. By meaning in terms of opportunities. You got to perform. You got to perform. And I shouldn't say you don't deserve opportunities because everybody deserves opportunities. They just don't deserve the same results. Well, equity is about. It, it, it's about having equal outcomes instead of equal opportunity. It is Marxism, Stephen A. And if that's what you're arguing about and that's what you're fighting about, that's something for the black community to take into consideration because we have to harken back. You see, we have to go back to the existence of affirmative action. 
Because DEI essentially emanates from all of that. So when we're talking about DEI, we got to go to its origin, which is affirmative action. Why did affirmative action exist? Why were these some of the things that we have to talk to? It was, inter it was intergenerational poverty among black Americans. It needed to be addressed. Jim Crow law, slavery before that. Civil rights legislation, 64. Voting rights legislation, 1965. We well, you know what? Since you brought up all that, Jim Crow, slavery, civil rights at 1964, voting rights 1965, that was all Democrats. Democrats were holding on to slavery. Democrats implemented Jim Crow laws. Democrats filibustered the 1964 Civil Rights Act and the Voting Rights Act of uh, 1965. That was Democrats, man. Democrats. Dr. King didn't want equity. He wanted equality. And now that DEI is gone, guess what? Now you get equality as an equal opportunity. You act like everything has been on an equal playing field. You know better than that, Clay. Why didn't you bring it up? Why didn't you say that? Why didn't you touch on its origin? Why don't we get a bit more specific and talk about when we're talking about affirmative action, which basically was the mother of DEI, essentially. Why don't we talk about that for a second? The first order of business was opportunity. One of the equal opportunities. When we recognized the fact that access was being denied, then it was access with opportunity. Okay? Where you can make a legitimate argument if you care to defer to history is bringing up the notion that some people put out there even some from the black community or some advocates for affirmative action. They were asking for equal results. That's where the doors opened. And that hole that you were looking for, meaning some in white America to exploit and take advantage of so you can eradicate such things. That's where the opening took place. Because in a capitalistic society, we're not all supposed to be getting the same results. To the victor goes the spoils. If you're smarter, if you work harder, if you're more efficient, if you're more effective, you get more than people who aren't. We understand that. Okay, I'm going to leave it right there. You guys can go and watch the, um, the rest of that right there. But Stephen A. is definitely extremely triggered over this whole DEI thing going away. I say it needs to go away, man. It needs to go away. I believe in equal opportunity. I mean, what good was um, DEI doing at the uh, University of Florida anyway? What, did it, what were they doing? All it is is discriminatory, man. You know what? If that's the case, why don't you actually call for DEI on football teams? Football players like the NFL are majority black. Now, if you actually implemented a DEI, you would actually start getting rid of black players and getting more of um, white players. That's what happened. But I'm pretty sure if that happened, guess what? Oh, boy, they would lose their minds. They were like, wait a minute, you're taking... A way of uh, jobs and opportunities from black people. Hey, but you wanted equity, right? That would be equity right there. That's just my thoughts on this. What do you guys think of this? Black and white sports fans. Let us know what you think about all this in the comments. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. And we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching the show. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Be sure to tune in next time on Black and White Sports.